Hello folks and welcome to Mr. Herbert's science class. Well today I'm producing this video to again warm LiPo users of the dangers of LiPo battery charger and also showing a safer way to charge and store them. I know there are many ways to do this but this is my way and a way that I really feel most comfortable. You see an unusual LiPo charging accident recently happened to me while charging one of the 5200 6 cell 22.4 volt batteries that I use in my electric Byron F16 jet. Well these batteries were never crashed, they shown no signs of dings or swelling or broken leads and were only used eight times. You know my charging stations at home are done atop a piece of quartz and a toilet tank lid. My bigger batteries always get charged inside a LiPo safe charging bag too. I know there are many different types of sizes of them and the one that I've been using for years was similar to this one. Well, when the battery was shorted out and destroyed the charger it also destroyed the bag so I decided to do something different. I do know it's usually difficult to get the balance connector and the battery connectors inside the bag along with the main wires and get that velcro closed too. There's always been a partial opening for the wires when I do it and I always thought there just got to be a better way. Luckily I monitored my lipos constantly when charging was happy that I was able to prevent a disaster when this battery shorted out inside the bag. And as you can see the charger wires that were exposed coming out of the bag shorted and completely burned out the charger at the same time. Now, I've been using the AC6 chargers reliably for years but this time something different failed. So again at this point since I always thought there could be a better way to charge the lipos I was forced to make a better charging bag. It's completely self-contained and I call it my LiPo charging station. Well, since the one charger was totally destroyed, I've decided to purchase two Tenergy chargers that can charge a maximum of 5 amps. That's the maximum that most chargers charge anyway. Well, I picked them up because I actually needed a match pair and they actually use the same software program as the AC6 which I'm familiar with. Well, the thing I like about them is that they have separate power supplies outside the charger so no fan is required inside the charger as most charger heat was being produced by the power supply that was built in with the fan. I also decided to pick up a metal toolbox from Walmart for only 19 bucks and build my own self-contained charging station. I also picked a couple more up to put my spare batteries in. So here's how I did it and how it works. I feel a whole lot better with my lipos being completely contained with the chargers inside the container. Plus it's very handy to use in the garage or at the field since the chargers can also run off 12 volts. I needed the two chargers because there are two batteries in my F16 and it's far less time consuming to charge both at the same time. Well first I drilled six vent holes in the lid and then I drilled two holes in the side for the power supply jacks. So here you can see the two power supplies back here and I just simply plug them in the holes on the side like this and that turns on the, the units inside. So that's how that works so you got to have those holes on there now. We'll go ahead and you can see what's going on. We'll go ahead and charge some batteries and I'll show you how this works. So as you can see I've got this little brace in here. This is so that these don't move slide back and forth so when I unplug and plug these in over on this side nothing moves so I can uh, put those on and also a piece of foam in here that wedges it up tight so they stay pretty solid so that's how that works in there. Okay one of the things I like about these Tenergy uh, it comes with the connectors uh, one set of connectors that you can plug in all kinds of batteries and most of the ones that I use I'm going to go ahead and charge these 1800 7.4 batteries right now. I've got it connected up to the uh, balance port here and these are uh, Dean's connectors. Okay over here on the chargers themselves I've got them set for auto right now. I'm going to go ahead and change that to a uh, balance. Okay and uh, as we can see that's five so we want to change that so I'm going to say okay <clears throat> to 1800 because that's the battery. I charge at 1C. I never go over it. I know you can but I don't. 
So we're going to say OK and we're going to change that back down 7.4 balance. That's 7.4. OK, I'm going to say OK. I'm going to press the OK button here. It's checking the batteries. It's uh, saying OK, confirm to enter. I'm going to say OK and now it is going. And if I want to check the battery, I just press this button and I can see the two cells. There's 4.2 there and 4.2 there, so it's pretty close to being charged. We're going to go down to the other battery now. It says LiPo charge. I'm just going to do charge on this one just to show you how that works. And uh, it's gone auto. Now if I say uh, that's 1.85, I want to change that to 1.8 because that is what the uh, battery is. See here, 1.8 amp, and uh, it's on auto. If I want, if I say okay, now I go over this. I can change the voltage. Oh, that one's full. So that one is fully charged right there, balanced. All right, now we're going to go over here. Now see, charge. Say okay, okay. So I'm going to change the voltage. Say I want to go up. It's a 7.4 volt battery. You can go all the way up to 22.2. Don't do that. You got a two cell battery at 7.4. Or you can just put it on auto, like this. When it's on auto, it'll automatically measure the voltage and pick the right number of cells, which is a lot faster. You just punch it. No, I just punch it. And it's going to start charging. And it is 8.32 volts. Okay, so we take that. And uh, I want to look at the voltage of each cell. I can click this 4.19, 4.19. So that's what's in that one right now. So that's how the insides of this thing works. As another added safety feature, I've got this little micro uh, smoke detector here. And uh, when I'm charging batteries or anything, I can go ahead and set that in here right on top of the batteries or there. If anything goes wrong, smoke detector will go off like that it's okay you're all done you say you don't want you want to take it on the road you want to go in the car you unplug your uh, power supplies here unplug them here you can either put them inside put the charge batteries or however many batteries I want to put in here I could put the power supplies up here I have plenty of room to do that and uh, close it up and take off and away we go so typically I keep all my batteries in a separate place this is my uh, the bigger batteries down there I keep the small batteries up here these are all charged I keep them safe and cool and uh, locked up same with some extra batteries here or replacements for in the cameras and stuff. And uh, like I said, you always want to make sure you have a fire extinguisher handy, just in case. This is by my Nest smoke detector, which brings my phone. And uh, you know, I uh, I sit in here and I can monitor it. And you don't want to not monitor what's going on when you're charging batteries. Well, thanks a lot for watching, folks. In my opinion, it's good to refresh your battery charging techniques, check your batteries, and check where you charge them. So be safe and not sorry. This is Nightflyer, signing off till next time, which should be about my electric Byron F-16 mods. I would appreciate it if you click on my picture here, and that way you'll get to subscribe. Click on the bell to make sure you get notified when I make new videos. Thanks a lot, and happy flying!